Hello grade 9 students, how are you all doing today? Welcome to another lesson for our radio-based instruction for Science 9, Quarter 3, Week 1. I know you're all excited to learn another topic as we explore the world of science. For this lesson, we will talk about volcanoes. Yes, you heard me right. Volcanoes and how amazing they are. So, get your pen and paper your self-learning module, and your weekly learning activity sheet. My name is Teacher Young. Come join me and let's begin learning! Learning science is fun, knowledge for everyone. 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 In this radio lesson, you shall be able to characterize a volcano, classify volcanoes as active or inactive, name active and inactive volcanoes in the Philippines, describe of each type of volcano, cinder 1, shield, and composite, and identify the different types of volcanic eruption. We are all mesmerized on how volcano looks like. It's a very wonderful creation. But we also got scared when we hear of volcanoes erupting. But what is a volcano? A volcano is an opening in the Earth's crust. Hot gases, liquid and solid materials reach the surface of the Earth through its opening often quietly but sometimes violently. The largest number of volcanoes can be found under the sea where the crust is thin. Magma is able to pierce through the weak parts of the crust. Some volcanoes may form along plate boundaries, but there are other volcanoes that are found farther away from plate boundaries. Scientists believe that this happened because magma finds its way up at other places from the interior of the Earth. Volcanoes can be classified in several ways. Thebolts have adopted a system where the Philippine volcanoes as active or inactive. When we say active volcanoes, these are volcanoes that have a record of eruption within the last 600 years or those that erupted 10,000 years ago based on analysis of their materials. While inactive volcanoes, on the other hand, are those that have not erupted for the last 10,000 years and their physical form is being changed by agents of weathering and erosion through formation of deep and long gullies. Volcanoes come in different shapes and sizes, and each structure has a unique history of eruption. However, volcanologists have been able to classify them according to their landforms and eruptive patterns. We have considered the three general volcanic types according to the shape of their cones, namely, shield volcanoes, cinder cones, and composite cones. Let's get to know them one by one. When we say shield volcano, this is a type of volcano that produces low viscosity, runny lava, spreads far from the source, forming a volcano with gentle slopes. Most shield volcanoes are formed of fluid basaltic lava flows. While cinder cones is a type of volcano which is circular to oval volcanic cone structures. These are composed exclusively or predominantly of pyroclastic ejecta dominated by cinder. They therefore form the simplest type of volcanoes. 
Composite cones or stratocones is a type of volcano which is made up of layers of lava, volcanic ash, and fragmented rocks. These layers are built up over time as the volcano erupts through a vent or group of vents at the summit's crater. The eruptions that form these cones, called Plinian eruptions, are violently explosive and often dangerous. A volcano usually has a summit, slope, and a base. At the summit, there is an opening which may either be a crater or a caldera. A crater is a funnel-shaped opening at the top of a volcano, while a caldera is formed when a part of the wall collapses following an explosive eruption. A volcano can have one crater, just like Mayon Volcano, or more than one, like Taal Volcano that has 47 craters. We have heard, experienced, and watched and use different volcanic eruptions. And yes, there are also types of volcanic eruptions. They are generally classified as wet or dry depending on the magma's water content. Volcanoes are described according to the style of eruption. First type is phreatic or hydrothermal is a steam-driven eruption as the hot rocks come in contact with water. It is short-lived, characterized by ash columns, but may be an onset of a larger eruption. Next type is phreatomagmatic, is a violent eruption due to the contact between water and magma. And as a result, a large column of very fine ash and high speed and sideway emission of pyroclastics called base surges are observed. The third type is Strombolian, a periodic weak to violent eruption characterized by fountain lava just like Erazo Volcano in Costa Rica. The fourth type of volcanic eruption is Volcanian characterized by tall eruption columns that reach up to 20 km high with pyroclastic flow and ashfall tephra like that of Paricuten Volcano in Mexico. And the last type of volcanic eruption is Plinian, excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastics, just like our Mount Pinatubo in Zambales. Now to get to know more about volcanoes and how interesting it is, let's proceed to our activities for this lesson. Our activity 1 is called, My Description is Your Command. In this activity, you will characterize a volcano. All you need is your learning activity sheets, a pen, and answer sheet. On page 2 of your weekly learning activity sheet, you can see in figure 1 a picture of Mayon Volcano. You can also search some of the pictures on internet and on your other reference. Based on those pictures, you will just give 5 descriptions of a volcano and write it on the concept map as shown on page 3 of your activity learning sheet. Very easy, right? Come on! Watch those pictures and write your answers on figure 2 concept map or you can use another answer sheet for your answers. Have fun!
Alright, now let's check how did you characterize a volcano based on the figure shown with Mayuan Volcano and of any other references of volcanoes you have with you at home. Volcanoes has crater. It has an opening on top. It emits hot rocks. It gives off gases and it is cone shaped. Wow, I guess you love volcanoes too. Very good answer! Now let's have our activity 2, Volcanoes in the Philippines. In this activity, you will classify volcanoes as active or inactive and name those active and inactive volcanoes here in our country, the Philippines. What you need are learning activity sheets, pen, and your answer sheet. Are you still following? Great! Now on page 3 of your weekly learning activity sheet, study table 1. It shows some list of volcanoes in the Philippines. Then, answer the guide questions that follow. On the list are the names of volcanoes, its latitude, longitude, number of historical eruptions, and latest eruption or activity. We have Mount Kabulayan, Mount Kokoro, Mount Eraya, Mount Kanlaon, Mount Mayon, Mount Pulong, Mount Smith, Mount Taal, Mount Tamburok, and Mount Urot. Now, I'm going to give you time to study its details, its latitude, longitude, number of historical eruptions, and latest eruption or activity. Come on! Alright, I think you already have enough time to study the details of those volcanoes. Let's now come to our questions. I know you're excited to answer. Let's see. Question 1. Which of the volcanoes had the greatest number of eruptions? Very good! Mayon has the greatest number of eruptions. Wow! Now, how about the least number of eruptions? Correct! Iraya has the least number of eruptions. How about volcanoes with no records of eruption? Nice! Volcanoes with no records of eruption are Kabulayan, Kokoro, Pulong, Tamburok, and Urot. Question 2. How will you classify the volcanoes that have records of eruptions? Very good! Those are active volcanoes. Number 3. How will you classify volcanoes with no records of eruption? Yes, you're right. They are called inactive volcanoes. Now for question number 4, in your own words, differentiate an active volcano from an inactive one. Wow, you got it right! Active volcanoes are those that have records of eruption or erupted recently while inactive volcanoes are those that show no record of eruption. We're not yet done. Let's proceed to Activity 3, Volcanic Landforms. In this activity, you will give a characteristic of each type of volcano. 
as we discussed earlier, the cinder cone, shield, and composite. All you need is your learning activity sheets, a pen, and answer sheet. Try to revisit the key concepts and give a characteristic of each type of volcano. On your learning activity sheet, you are shown a picture of cinder cone volcano, composite volcano, and shield volcano. Now can you give me its characteristics? Have fun! enough time to write the different characteristics of cinder cone, composite, and shield volcanoes. Let's try to check your work. For cinder cone volcano, it is a type of volcano which is circular to oval volcanic cone structures. This is composed exclusively or predominantly of pyroclastic ejecta dominated by cinder. They therefore form the simplest type of volcanoes. Well, composite volcano is a type of volcano which is made up of layers of lava, volcanic ash, and fragmented rocks. These layers are built up over time as the volcano erupts through a vent or group of vents at the summit's crater. The eruptions that form these cones are called Plinian eruptions, violently explosive and often dangerous. Composite cones are also known as stratocones. While shield volcanoes is a type of volcano that produces low viscosity, runny lava it spreads far from the source forming a volcano with gentle slopes. Most shield volcanoes are formed of fluid basaltic lava flows. Now how do you feel having Mount Mayon in our country? With its perfect cone. I'm pretty sure we're all proud of it. And if given a chance to visit one volcanic site in our country, where would you go and why? Aha! We have the same thought. I also want to visit Mount Mayon soon. Now let's come to our final activity for this lesson. It is called Types of Volcanic Eruption. All you have to do in this activity is to identify the different types of volcanic eruptions. All you need are just your learning activity sheets, your pen, and your answer sheet. On page 5 of your learning activity sheet, you can see column A and column B. You will just match the different types of volcanic eruption on column A to its description on column B. You can write your answer on a separate sheet. Let's begin. Number one is Plinian. What letter do you think from column B is Plinian? Very good. It's letter C. Excessively explosive type of eruption of gas and pyroclastics just like our Pinatubo in Zambales. Number two, phreatic or hydrothermal. What letter matches phreatic or hydrothermal? Great! It matches letter A. Phreatic or hydrothermal is a violent eruption due to the contact between water and magma. And as a result, a large column of very fine ash and high speed and sideway emission of pyroclastics called base surges are observed. Number 3. Freya Tomagmatic What letter matches number 3? Great! It matches letter D because Freya Tomagmatic is a steam-driven eruption as the hot rock come in contact with water. It is short-lived, characterized by ash columns, but may be an onset of a larger eruption. 
Number 4. Strombolian. What letter matches number 4? Very good! Strombolian is letter B, a periodic weak to violent eruption characterized fountain lava, just like Irazo Volcano in Costa Rica. And lastly, number 5, Volcanian. What letter do you think describes Volcanian? Very good! Volcanian is described in letter E. It is characterized by tall eruption columns that reach up to 20 kilometers high with the pyroclastic flow and ash fall tepra like that of Paricuten Volcano in Mexico. Wow! That's a wrap for our lesson for today. I know you learned more about volcanoes. And this time, you can now characterize a volcano. Classify volcanoes as active or inactive. You can now also name active and inactive volcanoes in the Philippines. Describe each type of volcano, cinder cone, shield, and composite. And identify the different types of volcanic eruption. And that ends our lesson for today for Quarter 3, Week 1. I know you love our topic and we'll see you soon as we explore more about the world of science. My name is Teacher Young and don't forget to always be cheerful and strive to be happy. Bye!